Hello and welcome. It is the 6th of June 2014 and this is the first development vlog of Glowbreaker version 2. Version 1 if you're going to be playing it on Android so we're really excited to get this done and get it out to the Android market plus there's going to be extra features as well. Basically these development vlogs are going to be for us to tell you the status of our game but also to show you as quick as possible some of the pitfalls that we're having so you can try and avoid those pitfalls or perhaps you can even suggest ways to get around them because I have no doubt that we'll get to the end of the day we'll do a development vlog and there'll be stuff that we haven't fixed and there'll be stuff that the community will probably know so one of the okay first of all what, what we did today was just generate a new project in 3.1.1 because that's the latest version as of now, just make sure it worked on iOS and Android, implemented multi-resolution support, created these folders which is part of the multi-resolution support and set it to portrait mode because the game is portrait mode. One thing I really want to share with you is the multi-resolution stuff that we implemented. We have a separate tutorial for that, there'll be a link in the description. but. I added this extra little feature and basically a hash define here is landscape. I'll set it to false because the game is in portrait mode. So you can just set this to true and the landscape I mean the game will be in landscape mode. You might think generally all games are even landscape or most games are even landscape or portrait. This is useful because our multi-resolution code we copied and pasted it from an old project and we did that for that project as well and I think for the previous project as well and you'll most likely do that as well um, because you want to save time you don't want to go over stuff that you've already done and because you know it works but what we did change was we added this and then we just did the if statement where we set the design resolution size just to check if it's landscape if so we set it to landscape if not, we set it to portrait. We did this for all the if statements where we, I mean, all the places where we set the design resolution size. And the final thing that we added or changed was that we noticed when you were, went into the else statement here, we did a check initially just for this, which says if the screen width is greater than 1080, then use the iPhone Retina assets, which is fine. But we didn't check for the height as well and on here we've been checking for the height or the width for this one because it's not exactly equal to it's greater than you want to check or it's best to check if it's if they're both greater than 1080 because you never know you might get one a resolution at like 1280 by 720 and on one hand you'll get the high resolution assets but if you have it in another orientation the game is programmed for that 720 by 1280 you'll get the lower resolution assets if you just did the width so you want the screen size width and height obviously you can just do these numbers how you want your game to be but that's it for the first development vlog tomorrow we're going to look at creating scenes and just renaming some of the old assets because Glowbreaker 1 was, well, version 1 I should say, was created using Coco Studio iPhone. Oh, yeah, they also announced that the Coco Studio iPhone, I mean, announced that they're going to be doing Coco 2D Swift, which is, uh, which is interesting. Something that we'll be looking into and probably will do some tutorials as well, but we are focused on Coco 2DX. And yeah, like I was saying, we did for Coco Studio iPhone, so our name conventions were a little different. Uh, so instead of having the different folders for iPad HD, iPad and whatnot, we literally just had the different assets so you we would have asset 1 and then asset 1 HD or at 2x I think it's at 2x then we had iPhone I mean asset 1 iPad then asset 1 iPad at 2x so we're gonna need to rename them bundle them up a bit more uh, and organize them because they were not as organized as they could have been they were literally just in the resources folder at least most of them were, you had to scroll for quite a while just to see all the assets. So it was poorly managed uh, looking back at it, but at the time it seemed alright. And we'll see you probably tomorrow for the next development vlog, and thanks for watching.